Now, when I first saw Satoshi Island, as it's called, Bitcoin Island, it looked amazing. Everything about it was perfect, eco-friendly, sustainably built, like-minded community, crypto-based economy, and you can get citizenship potentially for free. Now, there might be hope for you, but sadly, I was to learn that my kind, if you will, is not welcome on Satoshi Island. I'm going to tell you why I was banned from Satoshi Island in a moment. So this is a real island. As per their website, 32 million square feet in size, located in Vanuatu, which is located between Australia and Fiji. Now, first off, who measures their land area in square feet? Nobody. That's like measuring yourself in millimeters just to sound bigger. Anyway, we did a quick calculation. Shows us Satoshi Island is actually just a bit over 700 acres in size. Now, the funny thing is, their promo video claims they are 800 acres. Welcome to Satoshi Island, an 800-acre private island. An 800-acre private island. It's not the size of the island, guys. It's what you do with it. So the concept of this island, all my sour grapes set aside, is very cool. Satoshi Island plans to be a sustainably built, solar-powered, complete crypto economy and a place where crypto enthusiasts and businesses can thrive. Now, if you qualify, you can acquire citizenship and ultimately plots to the island by way of NFTs. So instead of complicated real estate paperwork, you own an NFT that can be ultimately translated to a plot of land. Now there's 2,100 blocks with 10 plots per block. That equals 21,000 plots on the island in total. Now you could buy one plot or several. Now the stated goal on their website, Satoshi Island is poised to become the crypto capital of the world intended to bring together thousands of crypto professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Life on the island is going to be an experience like no other, giving the crypto community a way to live and work amongst like-minded people in a place designed around the industry we love. Just picture it. Crypto bros, karaoke by the pool, Jack Dorsey pouring you a Mai Tai. This is paradise. So apparently Vanuatu was chosen due to being crypto and tax friendly. Again, from their website, Vanuatu has no tax on profits, dividends, or income for corporations or individuals. There is no capital gains tax, no withholding tax, and no death tax. Now, with increasing tax grabs on crypto and pretty much everything else in the U.S., sounds like a great idea. Now, bear in mind, however, if you are in the USA, the IRS follows you for taxes everywhere. The USA a lot of people don't know this is actually the only major country that taxes its citizens regardless of where they live in the world. You can't escape U.S. tax. Now, renouncing citizenship, that actually is a possibility. But if your net worth, and this includes your home, your residence, if your net worth is over $2 million, you're likely going to be subject to an exit tax. That's a subject for another day. Now, the Satoshi Island website states you can apply to get yourself a free citizenship NFT. However, they do not grant the holder citizenship of Vanuatu. Now, if you hold the Satoshi NFT citizenship, you can be fast-tracked through the Vanuatu Investment and Migration Bureau. I checked out their website. It looks like citizenship officially is going to run about $130,000 for a single applicant to $180,000 for a family with two kids. Now, that's actually not too bad in relation to other countries' residency by investment programs, but a Vanuatu passport, not the most desired out there. Now, the very cool structures on the island are designed by award-winning James Law of Cybertecture. Apparently, you can pick up one of these modules for only $60,000, which is relatively reasonable. You can chain them together if you want to make larger spaces. Now, I've always loved this design for private areas by a lake somewhere that's private, but when these are put all so close together, I've got to ask, isn't there going to be privacy issues? Now, another concern that I would have is hurricanes. 
They get pretty crazy in this part of the world. Not sure if I want to be in a glass house during a hurricane. Now, I couldn't find anything that speaks to that specifically on the website, but I expect they do have something figured out. Now, the first batch of modules for short-term stays, that's due in Q3 of 2022. It's estimated the manufacturer can pump out 200 of these every single month. Now, Q4 2022, the borders of Satoshi Island is going to be open up for holders of citizenship NFTs for short-term stays. Q1 2023, homeowners are going to be able to begin residing on the island or renting out their homes. Now, according to sources, over 50,000 free citizenship NFT applications have already been received, which basically whitelists somebody for future upcoming land sales. Couldn't find anything online how much these land uh, plots are going to cost. But if you have that NFT citizenship, that fast tracks you into the land sales. But why on earth is poor old Robert not welcome on Satoshi Island? Well, anyone can own land NFTs. You can get one of those. But if you want to set up a private home, obviously like I would, I don't want an NFT. I want to live in paradise. You have to qualify if you want to do that. Now, how do you qualify? Well, you must have a minimum of 21 followers on Twitter just to apply for the Satoshi Island citizenship. Now, I was so close, so close. I was off by only 21. My own personal three plus year old Twitter account rocking a thick zero followers right there in the meaty part of the curve. So although I'm not Satoshi Island material based on that, you might be able to snap up a free citizenship. Now, seeing as I've been shunned by Satoshi Island, I'm actually looking at buying my own micro nation. I'm dead serious about this. You can actually do that. If you want to hear more about this very bad idea, you can click above. Thanks for watching.